Hey everyone, welcome back to Backtrack Cinema and happy Friday the 13th. In this video, we'll be ranking my top 13 favorite Friday the 13th moments in the franchise. So get comfy, get a drink, and let's talk some Friday the 13th. This is great! Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel and happy Friday the 13th, guys. You know, Friday the 13th franchise is like my favorite horror franchise. Absolutely love it. So all of us movie YouTubers love to celebrate Friday the 13th in our own way. And I thought, let's do my top 13 Friday the 13th moments. Before we get to the ranking, though, guys, let me know in the comments below what your favorite 13 moments are or just a few moments or your favorite moment. Tell me your favorite Friday the 13th movie as well. We'd love to hear about it in the comments below, and we'll have a great talk about it. So coming in at number 13 is Jason's Out There. And he's hungry. Jason's out there. Watching. Always on the prowl for intruders. This is Paul's infamous speech he gives around the campfire. It's awesome. It's got a lot of atmosphere. It's got a lot of mood. And really sets up Jason as a character. Where he hunkers down at Camp Crystal Lake. And when people do intrude, this sets him on a path of vengeance. When Jeff and Sandra cross into the, the old campgrounds. This sets him off on a just a killing spree. That goes from the Friday 13th Part 2, Friday 13th Part 3, Friday 13th Part 4. Until his demise, but of course he comes back in resurrection. But that's what it really does, and I really like the camel working it. I like how there's really there's no music. You just hear Paul telling you know Jason's out there and he's hungry. There's just a lot of tension and some sense of dread there, and we just get you know we just get that characterization of Jason Voorhees. So absolutely love it. Coming in at number twelve is he's still there. So this is the famous jump scare at the end of Friday the 13th Part 1 that I can imagine that nobody saw coming when they first saw this in the in the theaters in the original movie. It's great and it's and it, you know what? We got to give a lot of credit to Harry Manfredini here. There's this peaceful quiet music where Alice wakes up, the cops are showing up, then bang, Jason comes out of nowhere, you know, pulls her down into the lake and you know she wakes up at the hospital. It's great because they really suck you in to think that this movie is over and the credits are gonna roll and all that jazz with that great, great music. And it just leaves you really unsettled. Like I really find the ending of Friday the 13th an unsettling feel to it when you're done. You know what I mean? Of course we wanna pop in the next one right away, but it's got this kind of unsettling feel kind of a dreadfulness and it's great and it's all that jump scare works because of the music the surprise you know the great makeup effects by tom zavini but this this moment is great coming in at number 11 is the alley shuffle from friday the 13th part three I love the Ali shuffle. You know, this is when Ali earlier from the biker gang shows up, meets Jason, gets his ass kicked. But you know what? He doesn't run away. He doesn't scream or nothing. He sees Jason. And he's like, picks up, the, got the machete there, and he's ready to lay down. He's really like to get it on with Jason, man. And of course, he he gets smoked. But and we think he's dead. That's what's so great. This came out of nowhere. It was a big surprise when Chris is. Um, trying to fight off Jason at the end in the Barney. He comes out of nowhere, gets his ass kicked this time, gets completely murdered. You can hear him screaming and bleeding to death all over the place. But Allie's a badass, man. I mean, he takes on Jason twice. I just wish we got a little bit more of a fight from him. I think that would have been really cool. But it's a great moment, and I really like Allie as a character. He's one of the more memorable characters from Friday the 13th Part 3. Coming at number 10 is Jimbo's Dance Moves from Friday the 13th Part 4. This moment is just so funny. You got to love Crispin Glover in this. He, he just made this role so entertaining, so funny to watch. And I love his dance moves in here. And in fact, be known, like when he's dancing, 
He's actually dancing to Back in Black when they were filming it. They couldn't get the licensing or anything to use um, Back in Black. But if you watch Crispin Glover, he's dancing to Back in Black. You can, you, can, you can see the way he's dancing to that beat of that song. And they had to replace it with another song. So it kind of looks off and everything. But it's funny as hell. You got to love Jimbo trying to impress a girl with this ridiculous dance. But uh, he's the dead fuck. He's the infamous dead fuck, and we love him for that. Just just an awesome moment. Coming at number nine is the RV scene from Friday the 13th, part six. Wow, man, where do I start? This is an awesome scene from the moment it starts to the moment the rv crashes and that iconic shot of jason popping it open and just standing there up on that rv there's some funny moments in here you know you got nikki and court they're having sex they're rolling it they're having a great time the music's going and i just i just love the look on court's face when he's like how much longer and she's like it's only 10 more minutes <laughs> yeah. i absolutely love this and there's some pretty good camera work when Court goes outside. He's walking around the RV. Like Tom McLaughlin did some pretty good directing here. I felt like some good atmosphere here, and yeah, just, just love this. And Nikki's death. Nikki's death is awesome. He grabs her. And he crushes her freaking skull right through the trailer, and you can see her face kind of like dent in the plastic and come right through. It. It's awesome. But it's it's just crafted really well. This whole scene from beginning to the end of the scene. It's just entertaining. It's funny. It's vicious. It's violent. Magic, man. Just awesome. Coming at number eight is Jason's death from Friday the 13th, part four. Just another awesome moment. Great practical effects here with Jason's death. And I really love the makeup on Jason, what he looks like underneath the mask here, because they match it up really well with the first movie. The first movie where he comes out of the lake and, you know, he's bald with the one eye lower than the other. They, they just, they did a great job overall on this. And, you know, when Trish cuts the mask off and it just slow-mo and it rolls to the floor and everything like that. I really like the way the scene's crafted. And I like how they trick Jason with psychology again, you know, by Tommy shaving his head and get some thinking and you know jason's like this curious animal almost going to touch tommy's head remembering what it was like to be that age to be a boy at crystal lake you know what i mean so i really love this and it's just that when when tommy puts that machete in the side of his face and he falls on that machete and he's sliding down the animatronics, all the people controlling everything. It's just great, man. Just one of it really is one of the best deaths, one of the best practical effects I've seen. It's that good, man. It's that good. If you're gonna end Friday the thirteenth, that was the original plan. This would have been just a a great ending to a, a four part horror series. Coming at number seven is Axel's death from Friday the thirteenth, part four. <laughs> I mean, Axel is funny as hell, but he's a douchebag. He's putting bodies on ice all night. You know, horrific murder spree happening. And all this guy can think about is getting it on with the nurse. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's a douchebag, man. He really is. So the kill, I think, is just that much more satisfying. Where Jason just grabs him, takes that surgical saw, and just cutting through his frame, just twists the freaking guy's head around. I, it's just an awesome kill just an awesome kill that's some of the dialogue Axel delivers here when he's like holy jumping christmas shit man <laughs> it's just like i laugh every time at this just the dialogue the guy's saying the way he's freaking out and everything but this is such a great kill to a, a, a memorable character we give him that a memorable character coming in at number six is marcy's death in friday the 13th part one <laughs> I love Marcy's kill. I love this death. I think the character of Marcy is awesome. And I think that's what makes the death even more impactful because we like her. At least I do. I think Marcy was a cool character. She's like that cool, fun chick of the of the group. You know what I mean? And axe kills. I just love. I love axe kills so much. I like the way it's crafted, you know, where she's opening the shower curtain and then axe comes down, smacks her in the face and you see the light moving. You can see where this kill was influenced by... Uh, 
Vera Miles hitting the light in Psycho when she sees Norman's mother. But yeah, when well, that axe smacks her face and she, she hits the wall and this goes down, her kind of jaw kind of... She gets this dead look on her face. She gets this dead look on her face. Like this, everything just kind of like... Like that, you know what I mean? And drops to the floor. Or starts sliding down the wall. Um... I uh, and I know in the uncut version they linger on it more, which is fantastic because you just get to see a bit more. But this kill still looks so very real to me. I absolutely love it, and and I th it's my favorite Friday the Thirteenth kill actually out of the whole franchise. I always this kill is just awesome, and when you watch it on VHS, um, the, like the color grading's a bit different. It's a bit darker, the blood and everything, so it's grittier and grainier. So it even looks even better, but. Just a great kill, man. Such a memorable kill, Marcy's kill. Coming in at number five is Jason versus Tommy and Friday the 13th, part six. So this is in our third act. This is the boat scene where, where Tommy's got this idea to put him back in his resting place, which is a fantastic idea. Like... I love the way they end this by instead of like trying to kill Jason, it's just containing him in that lake. Maybe if we put him back in the lake, this will end this curse. If it would have ended here, it would have been fantastic. It's just a, a great um, kind of lore to it. Almost like uh, tapping into like, you know, like Dracula and vampire kind of stuff and, or, you know, using crosses on, on vampires and stuff, creating their own kind of, lore to end the curse and i really like that and the way it's shot it's like it's like jaws man you know you see the camera and the water and everything jason smashes through the freaking boat grappling with tommy and cj graham here his performance is awesome in the water the way him and tommy are fighting it's very cinematic it's engaging entertaining it's cinematic it's a bit vicious you know what i mean um, the only thing that would have been better if it would have been pouring rain and thundering during that during that scene would wouldn't that have been something? But just just an amazing scene. I always really like this scene. Coming in at number four is the intro to the Friday the Thirteenth remake from two thousand nine. When I mean intro, guys, I mean that first 20 minutes. I mean the whole thing. I mean, it's a pretty long scene, but there's, there's certain moments I really like. Um, all the kills are really good. Like when he's the, the sleeping bag kill where he, he ties her up over the fire and she's just roasting like a freaking turkey. I mean, Jason is just a beast in this movie. I mean, I have my own issues with this movie. I kind of sit in the middle with this movie. You know what I mean? I don't absolutely love it. I don't absolutely hate it. But one thing I cannot deny is this intro and Jason is a beast. The way he's just charging through the woods. I mean, it's it's slasher heaven, isn't it? Problem with it, though, is the, the rest of the movie doesn't kind of live up to the, this opening. This is like a lot of times I just want to turn it off after the opening. It's that good, you know what I mean? And I like seeing Sackhead Jason. I think this is the best Sackhead Jason that there's been. I love the way they did the Sackhead on him. I love the way he breaks through the, the floorboards. And then he pops out of that trap door. And the way Derek Mears is just running there is just amazing. And then Richie's kill where he comes up. He's stuck in the bear trap. Hacks him right in the middle of the freaking eyes. And then just pushes the blade off with his feet. Kicks the guy to the ground. And the way he charges at Whitney and just cut. Friday the 13th. It's great, man. It really is a great opening for Friday the 13th fans. It's almost like a film within a film. A short film within a film, you know what I mean? Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Coming at number three is His Name Was Jason from Friday the 13th. His name was Jason. I was working the day that it happened, preparing meals. Here, I was the cook. Jason should have been watched. Every minute. I love this. This is where Mrs. Voorhees shows up and she's telling the story about Jason, her son who drowned here to Alice. And Alice is all panicked. She doesn't know who this woman is. And it's just that switch from this sweet lady to the psychopath. Which is kind of gazing off. She's like, Jason, my only child, Jason. You almost see the tears welling up in her. I couldn't imagine losing my child. You know what I mean? Ever. So... We kind of feel for this woman, even though she starts going all freaking crazy on Alice. The way she just starts telling this story is this creepy and eerie and there's some great 
Harry Manfredini music going in behind it. It's awesome stuff, man. It's awesome. Coming at number two is Jason's Big Entrance in Friday the 13th, Part 4. So this is the moment where Jason throws Rob through the window. He attacks Tommy, through, crashes through the window, and then Ted White busts through that freaking door, and he's chasing them both up, up the stairs. This is just a great moment of trying to survive this tiny house. They run up the stairs from this freaking killer, who's just massive, swift, fast, and brutal, you know what I mean? And there's something about waiting your own demise. When they lock themselves in Tommy's room and Jason's just cutting through the axe, there's something about just that wait, and, you know... The anticipation, you know what I mean? And when uh, Trish escapes, that that little part of the scene's over, then we lead into Jason's death, right? But Ted White just did such a fantastic job of the stunt works here. Don't underestimate um, how good it is. You know what I mean? How good of a stunt man he was. The way he crashes through that window, busts through that door, throws the hammer at Trish, it just gets me every time. It's like... That's why, that's why this Jason is so freaking scary and intimidating. I know other Jason films, he's bust through walls, he's bust through doors and windows and everything, but there's something about how Friday the 13th 4 just did it the best. And that, that kudos to freaking Ted White. Just an awesome Jason and the scariest Jason ever. For me, he's the scariest Jason, man. I love Ted White's Jason. Before I give you my number one favorite moment, guys, here are five honorable mentions. Jason, mother is talking to you. Hey, I dropped your wallet. I'm sorry. I got it. Coming in at number one is Jason's Resurrection from Friday the 13th, Part 6. Well, it had to be this one, guys. This is my favorite moment in the whole series. I love Jason's Resurrection. What a way to bring this character back. And I just love how much style... Tom McLaughlin brings to this by paying homage to the Frankenstein movies, the old horror movies from the 30s and the 40s. You know what I mean? That, you know, he's even said, you know, this would look good in black and white. And it does. I've actually put a slap the filter on it on the editing software and watch pieces of the movie in black and white. Oh, man, does it ever work, especially the graveyard scene. But it all starts with this obsession with Tommy where Jason's still haunting Tommy. So there's still a psychological component to it that I really like that it's like him in the ground is not good enough. He has to dig him up and burn him, make sure there's nothing left and this will get rid of his hallucination. So this idea of being taunted by Jason, like even in the ground when he's dead, he's still getting the Tommy. Absolutely love it. And I just love the insert shots of all the angels in the graveyard and just how unhinged himself Tommy is here. Where he you know he snaps and he sees Jason and he's he starts reminiscing again. He starts stabbing him and stuff like that. I mean the guy's dead and he's sitting there stabbing with him and you know, why not? Bring him back with a lightning bolt. It works, right? Because then you can explain that he can do all these supernatural kills that a human in this world could never do. So that's what makes the it, it's so great. It's entertaining. And there's some really nice moment here when he is thinking back when you hear Trish going Tommy get the hell out of here and you can start seeing that that pain on Tommy's face and the sadness of you know who Jason took from him and I love that a little bit of obsession here you know he's so obsessed of killing Jason once and for all and at the same time he let him out the guy was dead you didn't have to go dig him up 
but we would never got one of the greatest Friday the 13th movies ever. So this moment is this great. It's this, like I said, it's got so much style. The way Jason pops out of the freaking ground, the way he looks, the maggots are all falling on him and stuff like that. Like the great practical effects here of the way he looks in the ground and when he pops out and they light him perfectly. This, this, that old school monster feel, you know what I mean? And I absolutely love this moment. This moment is easily my favorite moment in the Friday the 13th franchise. Well, that is it, guys. I hope you enjoy your Friday the 13th. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give me a subscribe if you really enjoy the channel. And I'll post other related videos right here, guys. You can click on those and watch some Friday the 13th reviews. I'd really appreciate it. That's going to do it for me, guys. I will see you on the next video, and I will see you in the movies, man. Cheers.